Well, these are probably the worst conditions you could ever go cart fishing in. Last night it was down to minus three. Today it's given out to be a heady zero degrees and it's snowing. There's a big northeasterly wind kicking through, so it is bitterly, bitterly cold. But we're down here on a lake, pretty close to my home, and we're gonna try and catch a carp. Now, with the restrictions that are in place with lockdown, I can't travel too far, I can't do night sessions. So here we are, I'm literally within walking distance. I probably live about 15 minute walk that way. So we're nice and local to home. And like I say, it's not the best conditions, but we're gonna try our best. Now, this water that I'm at today, I fished it 30 odd years ago. Um, and I've not really fished it much since. I think I fished it twice in the last 10 years. You know, normally it's just a case of coming down in the summer, a bit of floater gear, have a bit of fun for two hours and go home. But I've got no idea what it fishes like at this time of year. And I'm not entirely sure if I've caught a fish off the bottom from here. But I know that there's a, a fair few fish in here. I don't know quite how many now. Uh, things have changed over the years. Years and years ago, it used to be full of wild carp back when uh, Bass Brewery used to run it. And then over the years, mirrors and commons have been trickled in. So I think there's still a few wildies left, but I think there's, there's, there's more sort of king carp in here now. So we're gonna give it a go and see what happens. Well, the rods are out and I'm all set up. Now I was debating where to fish um, around this lake early and I, I did have sort of 20 minutes, half an hour walking around to try and see if anything was showing, but nothing showed at all. I'm not really surprised in this weather. It is, uh, it is bitterly cold. Um, now the swim next door to this one is, it looks like the big main swim that most people fish. It's, it's, it's really muddy. Uh, the banks all around it are all worn. And when you look at it, it's, it's the big open swim that covers a lot of the lake. Um, I didn't really want to drop into that one even though it gave me good access to, to the whole water. So I've dropped in this swim, it's a swim next door. And what this swim does, it gives me control of this corner and round the sides here. Now I don't know the lake that well, but when I used to fish here, um, I can remember this bit down here being a little bit deeper than that bit out there and sort of that corner. Now the opposite side of the lake there, I know is really, really shallow because when the, when the water's a bit clearer than this, when it's not so flooded, the, you can see the bottom through most of that out there. So it's about 18 inches, two foot deep across there. And there is a, a, a pipe coming in in that top corner there, and it's absolutely gushing in at the minute. And then it comes out in that other corner across there. So that water across there, I'd say was, is turning over and moving quite a lot. Whereas this water here will be fairly static. And there's a couple of little streams that do come in further up there, but that is the main body of moving water up there. Now, the fact it's been really cold today and yesterday, but reasonably mild, a few days before that, I'm guessing it's going to be absolutely freezing at that top end. Whereas this end here, where it's a little bit deeper down in this corner, I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit warmer. And I think the fish will push up this end. Plus as well, this is an old estate lake. And that bank there is, is, is the dam wall. So every time I fished a dammed lake in the past, the dam has always been the deepest bit, you know, where they, where they create the bun to stop the flow of the stream coming through. So I'm guessing this little L shape here is the deepest bit. And now from casting out as well, I can, I can feel a bit of a drop and I'm, I'm guessing I'm getting six, seven, maybe eight foot on the drop. So it is a lot deeper than what we've got in the rest of the lake. So I'm hoping the fish have pushed into this sort of little L shape and um, hopefully something will show or I'll get a liner or, or something will happen, uh, which will indicate where the fish are. And uh, hopefully once I find one, I think there's a chance of finding two or three, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll just keep an eye on the water keep watching out for line bites and uh, hopefully that will tell me where the fish are, but we'll see.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep both rods roving around a little bit because fishing these conditions, it's, they're going to be very, very lethargic. They're just going to be uh, sitting there, not doing a great deal, not really moving too much. And there's probably groups of fish in, in no more than, a, I don't know, say a, a rod length sort of round area. They're probably all just huddled together in, in one little bit. You know, I've got a koi pond back at home and they're all just sitting in one corner or another corner all together. And I think the fish out here in these, in these conditions, the way that temperature's just dropped, I think they're probably doing the same thing. So the best way to get a bite is to just keep casting the rods around and see if I can land on a pack of fish or to see if I get a couple of line bites, in which case I know I'll meet somewhere near them, either just past them or I'm actually on them. So every half hour, 45 minutes, I'm just gonna keep casting the rods around and just try and work the whole area. Right, I'm just going to glue my hook bait just to give it a little bit more attraction, a bit more electrical attraction as it goes down through the water. Now I'm not using the normal glug. I think the normal glug is absolutely fantastic for most uh, weather conditions, but being as the water out there is that cold, I'm using the, uh, the base mix enhancer, the base mix flavouring, just because it's a lot, lot thinner. So I, I think it will seep out a lot quicker in this, this very cold water. So anyway, it's had a good old glugging. I don't expect that to stay on for too long, but uh, if it's good enough just to attract a, a passing fish, or maybe just put a bit of flavour in the water column as it sinks, then that'll do me. Now the rigs I'm using this session are a little bit different to normal. I've got a, um, what I call a hinge stiff, but it's not a hinge stiff, the, the boom's quite soft because it's quite silty on that rod that I've just put out. This rod, I've got a little fluorocarbon rig and that's got a little, um, a little pop-up on, quite smelly, fruity pop-up, and that'll just sink critically balanced. Now on this one, I'm gonna put a little stick mix on, just with a load of crushed down boilie, and I'll try and put a little bag of uh, corn on there as well. Just, I've just got it drying in the towel now, so I'll literally get seconds between making the PVA bag up and uh, being able to cast it out. But I've just got to try and rove both rods around, um, put little pockets of bait in front of the fish, but nothing that's ever going to fill them up, just, just attraction more than anything. And hopefully that might get me a bite, but um, I'm pretty sure the fish are going to be really, really lethargic, so it's just, just a case of trying to nick one. Well, there doesn't seem to be a great deal in this little corner here. We've been here now for about, what, uh, two hours? And we've seen next to nothing. There's, there's, there's been a roach just turn on the top and that's it. Which normally is a good sign. If, if roach are in an area, there's a good chance the carp might be in, but I've had no liners, no nothing. I've had three or four recasts just dotted around this corner, going out a little bit further, just searching for liners or fish or just some sort of activity. And I've, I've seen nothing i haven't seen had a single bleep or anything like that so i don't think there's a concentration of fish down here um they might be I might just be missing them they might be that lethargic they're just sitting on the bottom but we have seen a couple of things between the islands and it's, it's difficult to work out at this sort of range whether it's it's bubbles or something just under the surface but there's definitely a bit of activity there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move to the next swim down which is quite a big open swim and it allows me a bit more access to to sort of cast around a little bit i can't hit this corner anymore but i will be able to hit sort of further out there. And I'm hoping that um, that might be enough to get us a bite. I just don't see the point of sitting in this corner when we're seeing next to nothing. You know, the way my brolly is angled, I can, I can just sort of see this sort of area. And when it's not snowing or it's baited like now, I can only see that bit of lake there. So if I can move my brolly, move all my kit into that next swim, and the angles are just gonna open up a lot more of the lake. And it would be great to catch today because the weather forecast for the rest of the week is even worse than today. It's dropping down to minus fours, minus fives for the rest of the week. So. 
pretty much every lake around here is, is going to be frozen. So it just seems to be a case of either lakes are flooded at the minute or they're frozen. So uh, I am quite determined to catch today. So I'm just going to move all my kit round to the next swim. It's going to open everything up. And hopefully I can, I might see something or even better catch something. Well, it looks like this move's paid off. Literally just moved around, positioned this one just off that right-hand island. Previously, I was fishing just the other side of it. And this rod's been in the water eight minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and it's gone. It tightened right up to the top and then dropped back down. And I'm into a fish. So it goes to prove just even a slight change, a slight move to give me a better angle on the side of the island has got me a bite and maybe the sun coming out has helped a little bit might have just uh, help with visibility helped them find the bait or it might just be a bit of warmth that's got to move around a little bit more but I'm very pleased to have got a bite oh. happy with that in these conditions it's not the biggest fish in the world it's a nice little common but when it's snowing when it's minus three at night and about zero in the daytime, it's nice to be able to just come and get a bite. So let's get him on the mat, shall we? Well, here he is. Happy with this one on such a bitterly cold day, but it's, uh, it's nice to get a bite and nice to have a bit of fun from a local water. Ideal world to be out trying to catch 30s and 40s, but uh, You've got to do what you can with, with a lockdown situation and, and, and the weather. Um, so I'm happy with the little common, probably, probably just about to make double figures. When I first saw him, I thought he, I thought he was a wildie, you know, one of the old 30, 40 year old wildies that are in here. But um, now this one's definitely a common carp, covered in leeches as well. So he, he has been sitting up in the silt a little bit and uh, no doubt just dropping a, dropping a bait right in front of its nose is what did the trick. So it was a little pink bait um, with a bit of pineapple flavouring on top and it was just a single. I've been casting sticks around and little bags around, but they've done nothing. So this uh, little pineapple pop did the job. So I'm going to uh, get this little fella back, get the rig back on there and uh, put two rods in the same sort of area. See if I can, uh, see if I can pick up another bite. Hopefully there's a, there's a group of fish down there or willing to have a little feed. So uh, let's see what happens for the rest of the session. But very, very happy with a snow carp in these freezing cold conditions. Well, the move paid off with that fish and it was right where we saw some bubblers, literally just tight into this island here, just on the left-hand side as we look at it out there. And um, I got the rod back out to position. I put the other rod just slightly out further away from it. But weirdly enough, on that first rod, I just didn't get a drop. So I left it 10, 15 minutes. I thought, well, there's something definitely wrong and it was snagged up. And I must admit, I probably went six, seven foot further with that second cast than I did with the first one. So I think what's happening is there's, there's some snags off the back of that island, tight into it, and that's probably where the fish are hiding and just holding in there. And that, that, that cast probably landed just on the edge of it. So it's probably right on the snags and that's probably what the situation is. They're probably in them snags there. The second cast that went over it, just before I redid it, I had a bit of a line bite. So there's still some fish down there in that snag. I've dropped it a little bit short now. So it's probably, I don't know, a um, couple of rod lengths short, maybe rod length and a half short of um, 
where, the, where I think the snag is. So we'll, we'll give that a little while, see if that goes. If not, I'll try and go another rod length further, see if I can be right on where it is. Um, the rod I've cast just off the snag hasn't done anything at all, but I've seen some bubblers out towards the centre, um, a little bit further to the left. So I've just put a rod across there to see what happens. And I must admit, it's not as shallow out there as I thought it was. You know, I, I thought sort of down here and that L shape was, was the deepest area, sort of six, seven, maybe eight foot, something like that. But it feels a similar sort of depth in between these two islands and out in this sort of area as well. So, so maybe this lake isn't as shallow as what I, I remember it from 30 odd years ago, I don't know. Um, but oh, something's just, something's just broke surface there. I don't think it was a carp, but it's round about the area. I've just put this left hand rod. So it shows there is fish down there. So I'm going to keep moving these rods around, keep trying to find fish, keep trying to get liners, chase a few, few bubblers when I see them. The, the problem with it with bubblers in a lake like this that's hundreds of years old, it's an old estate lake, it used to belong to that um, manor house up there. So at one point, this, I'm sure this was an old trout lake, um, but with it being an old estate lake, it's really, really silty. So sometimes the, silt, the, the bottom just does bubble naturally. Other times it can be a fish disturbing the silt that makes it bubble, or other times it's fish getting the heads down in the silt but there is a lot of silverfish in here. There's a lot of bream in here. Um, so when I'm casting to bubblers, I'm not entirely sure what they are. They, th they could be carp, they could be bream. It could just be the silt bubbling. But on days like today where nothing's showing, it's a miserable old day. It's, it's cold, it's, it's windy, it's horrible. Any sort of sign, any sort of sign of life could be a fish. And that's what I'm gonna keep doing. I'm probably gonna have 20 minutes, 25 minutes per cast and just keep roving the rods around. Now I've found them next to this island, that rod's pretty much going to stay there on and off. I'll just recast it every 25 minutes or so, just to try and get a slightly different angle because fish could be holding literally in a, in a bivy sized area, just, just sitting there, even though there's, there's no real difference in the lake with you know, silt or big depth variations or anything like that. They could just be holding a little tight area for whatever reason. So just by casting an extra six foot further or six foot to the right could make all the difference. So I'm pretty sure there's fish around the side of that island probably where I had that snag and there's something happening across there so I've got two rods on productive areas so I'm hopefully going to get another bite soon and uh, yeah well I suppose time will tell. Well, there's another one I put this cast right in tight to the island there seems to be a snag off the back of the island which I've caught twice now and I'm guessing that first fish was just off the just off the side of the snag. But I dropped this cast in literally just short of where the, just short of where the snag is, but quite tight to the island. I got quite a long drop on it, so it must be five foot just off the island, probably probably even a bit deeper than that. So it seems like the, the shelves of the island go straight down. And uh, drop this one in tight. And it just looked good straight away, so. Hopefully, well, I'll fish number two in a minute. That'll do, nice little mirror. Well, there's a cracking little mirror. Not the biggest fish in the world, but all welcome on a day like this. Just picked the net up to land it, the net was frozen, so I don't think it's got above zero all day. And it's now just starting to, I don't know if it's snow or hail, it's been a real changeable day. So it's been nice to catch a couple of fish. Admittedly, they're not the biggest fish in the world, but um, still, you've got, to, you've got to relay your expectations on days like today, especially when there's a lockdown and we can't travel very far. So it's nice to come out and uh, catch a couple of snow carp. So. I'm going to slip this little fella back and uh, I think we've got about another half hour of light, so see if we can catch another one. Oh, this water's bitter. Nice bit of fun on a cold day. Well, it's nice to catch a couple of fish on a day like today. It's, uh, it's not been the best fishing conditions by a long chalk, uh, but it's nice to come out and, and catch a you know, nice looking mirror in the end and the previous one was a, was a common, both on different rigs as well. One was on a pop-up rig, just on a single. Uh, the other one was on a critically balanced bait with a little stick mix on for a bit of added attraction. So it's two different techniques, two different fish, and it's, it's really helped by me moving around the rods. You know, not necessarily, I know I've done a swim move, but every half an hour, 
I'm just winding the rod in and casting it out to a different place. I must admit, since that first bite and a couple of line bites I've had, I've concentrated one rod around that island and that's what's produced me the two fish. But I've seen bubbling in other places. I've seen signs of movement, even though I'm not sure they were carp, but I've just kept it roving around. And even the rod by the island, I've, I've changed it around a little bit. I've moved it six foot to the left, brought it back six foot, cast it to the right. And on a couple of occasions, it's a good job I was because I was in a snag at some point that you know, there must be a branch that's fallen off the back of that island and, and it's underground. So if I haven't had wound that rod in, it probably would have been stuck in that snag for the whole session after that fish. And I wouldn't have got a second fish. So by keep roving the rods around and trying different things, that's what's produced me two bites. And that's the good thing about days like today when it's bitterly cold, you're just staying active, you're casting, you're not just sitting down doing nothing. Um, but I must admit, I haven't really been cold all day. You know, I can feel it on my face and on my hands, but you know, the modern materials and the jackets and the bib and braces now are designed to be flexible and to keep you nice and warm. So even though it's been sort of zero or minus one all day today, it's, it's, it's not been unpleasant. But you know, it's been, it's been an interesting day's fishing. Shame none of the bigger fish popped up, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that for a session. And uh, if you like what you're seeing and like all the content we're producing on the ProLogic channel, please uh, subscribe and uh, there'll be plenty of stuff to come. And hopefully when this weather breaks and when we get into the spring and out of this lockdown, I'll be traveling around the country again on my syndicates in Northamptonshire, Peterborough, down south, wherever I'm going. And hopefully I'll have some better fish to show you. But um, yeah, don't be afraid to get out in this weather and just enjoy a bit of fishing.